It's your boy Toy Roy here with an extremely large pylon. Yeah, I'm a uh, boy Toy Roy. What do you think I was doing? Constructing pylons? <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're gonna talk about one of the best RTS games that was ever made. No, we're not talking about this garbage, or that garbage, or all these other garbage. We're gonna be talking about this non-garbage. What's the opposite of garbage? That's right, StarCraft 64. StarCraft was and is the world's most popular RTS game of all time, probably. The game was made by Blizzard Entertainment, who've turned to garbage and basically pioneered its entire RTS genre. Loser! Made a I'm not fun. The game featured a total of three races that you could choose from, being the humans, the terrain, the aliens, Kodos, and the aliens, the Zed. Each race was completely unique from all the other races. You can engage in real-time battles between the three races in an all-out race war to see who is the best race. That's not racist. You can even go against each other as the same race. That's racist. StarCraft had plenty of units for each race that each served the purpose. For example, the Marine from the Terran was the most disposable piece of sh Marine that you could stim pack to make them spray and pray as they laid down the lead on those ugly Zerg overlords. Or the Zerg Mutalisk who was a giant flying potato. Or maybe you like the Dark Templar with his own secret weapon, which was to permanently stay cloaked and could slit a ghost's throat in one slice from behind. Which ironically, the ghost isn't cloaked, but he did have his own secret weapon. Nuclear launch detected. Since there were so many variables between each unit, StarCraft was a game that was played in pro esport tournaments all over the world. Some of the best players would compete, and still do, in pro tournaments where they would have these super quick fingers to react to situations. There's even a statistic for it called actions per minute, or APM. Even APM, bro? Probably not better than this guy. The objective was the game to fully destroy opponent's buildings. Each race had their own reskin buildings that basically did the same thing. You could tech level up and build more advanced buildings. Each unit also had basic ratings for armor and attack. With all these variables and possibilities, even Super Mario Maker 2 ain't got nothing on this guy. This game was released back in... March 31st, 1998. Thank you, Bing.com. One expansion pack was released with it called Brood War, which basically added more units to the game and stuff. Not much. The game was originally released on the PC, but over time Blizzard realized what a goof they made and did the right thing. They released it on the N64. That means instead of a full-size blue cherry switch mechanical keyboard with LED lighting with unlimited key mappings for all the things, you would use a console controller to do everything. Everyone knows that console controllers are way better than a mouse and keyboard. <laughs> I mean, why do you have the ability to assign hockeys to all nine of your groups when you can just sign it to four? Or why who even cares about deselecting vulnerable units to send in the battle when you can just send in all the units? Why even bother to do Reaver drops quickly by hotkeys when you can use a series of C button combinations along with the A and B button and the control stick. Why even play with the smooth buttery 60 FPS when you can play with the slideshow 29.997? Why even play with other people online on your own screens where nobody can see what your next move is when you can play with them offline on the same screen? Console players had it right the whole time. Who, serious, who needs this? We can use this. That's what all the pros do. Get off that poverty time PC and get on the pro leagues level, bruh. And that's why StarCraft for the N64 is one of the best RTS games of all time. I mean, it had all three races, fought on cannons, the Brutal DLC, Siege Shank, Split Screen Multiplayer, Carriers, Half Res Graphics, Battle Cruisers, most of the cheats, Kerrigan, No Future Patch Releases, Pylons, all the campaign modes, 16 bit rendition and soundtrack, Game Speed Settings, AI, Nukes, Zerg Lurkers, and even bots to play against. What more do you want? An outro? You require more minerals for that. I honestly don't know why all y'all keep subscribing. If you guys like what you saw, go ahead and hit that sub button so you can keep updated on all these stupid videos. But y'all keep subbing so I'll keep dubbing over these vids. But hey, that's just a review. A Roy's review! Thanks for watching!